Hello, my noble band of outlaws. Uh, last time around, I come at you live with a video. Well, as you saw from the title, we're returning to the Zombie Apocalypse series, Medieval Night Edition. I should say more early Renaissance, late medieval period, early Renaissance night. And I decided to drop a lot of the pole arms because that makes the video a lot longer. Especially since I don't really think a medieval knight would favor pole arms against zombies just simply because of the sheer number of zombies and the fact that pole arms are best used in formation with uh, people with smaller weapons. But what we're going to do is basically compare and contrast the two ends of medieval swords. Your standard double-edged longsword and your single-edged sword. Now, for purpose of comparison, since I don't have a falchion, which would be a more fair comparison, I'm going to use my Kriegsmesser and swap in hypothetical parts as necessary. Now, what does the longsword give you? Well, basically the pros of the longsword boil down to this. You have the derm you have the versatility of having two different edges. So when one edge blunts, you just simply flip the sword around and you have a clean flesh edge to cut with. The second biggest con biggest pro, I should say, is the versatility of techniques. Where you can use false edge cuts if you so chose. You can perform techniques like so. And if anyone knows what this technique is called in actual uh, treatises, write it down in the comments, since its name escapes me at the moment. Now, another big pro of the long sword and medieval and European swords in general is the pommel and the cross guard. Now you may be wondering, outlaw, What's the palm on the cross guard have to do with this? Well, this boils down to being able to use the pommel as the name suggests and pommeling or bludgeoning somebody or something, in this instance zombies. So if you had to, you could really bash them in the side of the skull with the pommel and then chop them with the long sword. Also, the quillums for the murder stroke. Now, I know some of you are going to freak out over me touching the blade with my bare hands, but this is how the technique is actually done. So you take sword sword and you bash them in the head with the quillums. Now I am not going to do that because one edge of this sword is a scalpel and the other sword and the other edge, while toothy, is still sharp and can cut me if I'm not careful. Now, overall, the long sword has these very uh, well-rounded pros. What are its cons, and why you would hesitate to pick up a long sword in a medieval in a medieval zombie apocalypse situation? Keep in mind, we're just going to assume our knight is fully has time to be uh, fully equipped with his armor, so. Shields are not really going to be a massive uh, contributing factor here. So, we have our fully armored knight. Why would he pick up a long? Why wouldn't he pick up a long sword? The cons being that the long sword isn't as robust in its construction as its single-edged counterpart. And let me explain. Long swords generally tend to be less forgiving in the cut because they are generally more flexible. This is because long swords typically have thinner blades than single-edged swords do. This makes them generally more flexible and more prone to edge deflection. Because the material that would have been used to basically form the spine of a single edge blade and be used to reinforce the cutting edge is in turn drawn out into a completely separate cutting edge. 
thus causing the long sword to lose out in overall edge durability. Which, when you're cutting through hordes of the undead, is a major thing to be considerate of. Now, this wasn't a universal thing among all long swords. There were definitely thicker long swords, thinner long swords, uh, wider long swords that would kind of compensate for the thin edge, but, well, not really compensate. It just aspirates the problem of a delicate edge. But yes, there were thinner long swords, thicker long swords, shorter long swords, heavier long swords, lighter long swords. There was a whole plethora of different versions of the long sword. However, the fact of the matter is that they share these somewhat uh, bendy blades. Now, this is not a good representation of a bendy long sword or a Flex or more flexible longsword. This is actually quite rigid and quite stiff. And I know what you're going to say. Outlaw, the Kriegsmesser bends more than the longsword does. True, but the Kriegsmesser also has a thicker spine and a thicker edge overall than the longsword. Now, what are the pros of the Kriegsmesser, or Fauschen-like blades in general? Well, one, as I mentioned before, uh, single-edge blades have the advantage of generally being thicker, stouter, and more rigid, which means they have a lot more uh, cutting power, generally speaking, than the longsword because the weight of the blade aids more in the cutting. It's more centralized as a cutting blade. And generally speaking, if you're going to go up against the undead, a cutting sword would benefit you more than a thrusting sword or a cut and thrust sword, simply because it's easier to cut off a zombie's arm then stab them in the brain or the heart or the rib cage and get your blade stuck. A blade has less of a chance of getting stuck cutting than it does thrusting. Also, in the case of the Kriegsmesser, more often than not you also have a nagel or a nail sticking out over the side to protect your uh, dominant hand. This is useful for a myriad of other reasons. For example, if you're dueling somebody and they're on this side of you, and the blade slides down, the noggle is going to catch the blade, thus protecting your hand. So in a zombie situation, you really wouldn't want, you really wouldn't have to worry about zombies wielding weapons more or less. However, it's still kind of, it's more of a, in that situation it becomes more of like a comforting thing, just to know that you have a little extra protection for your hands. Also, one other benef large benefit to a single-edged sword when it comes to using the murder stroke is that you have the, you can rest the spine in your uh, palm like so and pinch grip the blade and bash them in the head. Now, in historical manuscripts, whenever you see someone really using the murder stroke, they're more times than not wearing thick leather gloves to try to protect their hands. Personally speaking, I'm not a fan of using the murder stroke simply because grabbing the blade and then hitting you while holding on to the sharp blade doesn't exactly inspire confidence in me. Now, there is a technique that the single edge blade would be phenomenally better at using and safer at using 
than its double-edged counterpart. And that is half-sorting. Okay? You basically have no edge to worry about. So all you really have to do is just pinch grip the hell out of this thing and ram! And against a zombie, you need to keep in mind that a lot of the techniques used in these manners, the half-sorting, the murder stroke, these were made to combat people in armor. These really weren't used against non-armored opponents. Generally speaking, the blade of a sword was more than enough to take care of any unarmored opponent. And that's what your standard zombie is going to be. An unarmored peasant, basically. So, which sword would a medieval knight, or in this instance, medieval early renaissance era knight, pick up? The single-edged blade with its more cut-focused uh, blade orientation and more robust, an overall robust uh, blade? Or the more nimble, uh, slightly less robust, but still get the job done longsword? And me, personally speaking, if I had to pick between the longsword and the Kriegsmesser, Honestly, I picked the Kriegsmesser. And here's why. It's cutting a power. It's cutting ability. Not to mention that in, in this particular instance, this Kriegsmesser is lighter than the longsword. So... It's going, this is going to tire me out less quickly than the longsword will. But yet do equivalent amounts of damage because of the way the blade is shaped. Not to mention the fact that if I had to, I'd feel a lot more comfortable doing a murder stroke with the Kriegsmesser. Considering that it has a completely blunt spine. And then with the long sword, that's two sharp edges that I'm applying direct pressure to and swinging in an arc motion. Just imagine that for a moment. Also, if I had to go up against a human, let's say a knight, I could half sword much more confidently with this. There's also one other crucial benefit to a single edge blade that I don't see a lot of people mentioning, and that is the spine itself is a weapon. Okay? You can bludgeon somebody real good with the spine of this thing. So imagine. You're fighting, let's say, maybe one or two zombies. You just bash them in the head with the spine of the blade. You just bash them both into, into the head with the spine of the blade, and you're able to crack the skull open and kill them. You basically just preserved your edge and killed two zombies. Now, granted, that would require the zombie skull being extremely rotten or... Uh, structurally and uh, compromised because it's not easy to get into a skull. But let's just say you manage to do this. Or you cut one zombie, but one zombie's too close to you, and you just bring the blade up and bash them in the head like you're swinging a hammer. Causing them to be disoriented for a moment, and then you just cut them down. Being able to utilize the flat, the spine of a single-edged blade in combat, I feel is not as recognized as it should be. And I think I've done a video about this, ranting about this before. But 
Still, you really can't do that with a long sword. So overall, I feel a medieval knight is given the choice between a Kriegsmesser and a long sword would actually take the Kriegsmesser because fighting zombies is a more cut oriented kind of fight than it is a dueling fight. And that's another thing. Long swords and double edged swords in general are more optimized for dueling. Human versus human. Right? And it's because of the fancy techniques and the twisting and winding that you can do with these that's the case. This is simply designed to cut something in half or cut deep into something. This is basically a meat cleaver. It's designed to do one thing and that's cut through bone and flesh. This is a blade that you'd be using against an unarmored, unarmed opponent, honestly. Like say... Say I was... Uh, I was in the anime Terraformers or something, and I had my choice of weapons. They gave me a Kriegsmesser, and if, for those of you who don't know, Terraformers is about giant alien car about humans are uh, uh, spliced with insect DNA sent to Mars to get a cure for a disease and end up having to fight giant alien cockroaches. I would personally take the Kriegsmesser over the longsword because I'm not going to be getting into any kind of judicial duel with a six foot fucking cockroach that looks like he is an unholy abomination between the insect and Sasquatch. This is going to cut through that thing. More or less. So yes. I fully believe that in a... If we're comparing... Late medieval to early renaissance blades. Which are the Kriegsmesser and the longsword. The Kriegsmesser would be the better zombie weapon. Simply because of... The more safe versatility it offers. And you actually have two weapons in one. A blunt bashy thing and a sharp slashy thing. But let me know down in the comments below which one you think would be better. Which one you think would defeat, would do better against going up against zombies. And who knows, maybe I'll do a cutting comparison between Longsword and Kriegsmesser and see which one of these is the better cutting blade. But until next time, my noble band of outlaws, outlaw samurai, tells all y'all be crazy rednecks, be safe, use your weapons, I'm out, peace, and happy zombie hunting.